So, uh, good morning, YouTube. It's um, day one of the trip. I just woke up. It's uh, about 4.20 in the morning on Sunday. <coughs> and I'll be leaving in about <laughs> 5. I seriously just woke up. So, um, I kind of woke up about 3 o'clock this morning, you know, anticipating with a little bit of nerves or whatever. But um, I kind of want to go over... As I'm, as I'm putting my gear on, I kind of want to go over some of the stuff and kind of make this a, uh, not so much a product review, but just informative video as I get ready to go. So right now I'm wearing, I got like about four four of these I'm taking with me. They're uh, like a performance t-shirt, got them on sale at Sears. What I like about it is that um, they're very breathable, very cool. Um, carrying this one and three more, two other ones are sleeveless. Uh, but once, what I like about it is that if I throw it in the wash, um, I can just hang these out to dry, so uh, really easy maintenance. Uh, right now I'm wearing some cotton rain shorts, um, like this. Underneath these shorts right now, I'm wearing a pair of Liat uh, riding shorts that are reinforced protective shorts. I've talked about these once before, they're pretty much like um, bicycle pants, just with extra padding. So I've got these on. I'm gonna be wearing my Climb Mojave's today. I also had, a, I think, a video or two ago I talked about my Klein Mojave's. So these are the ones I'm going to be wearing. These are the pants I'll be wearing today. And one thing I haven't gone over yet, I'm going to go over this morning as I put them on, are these uh, Liat CE rated um, shin uh, and knee guards and how they fit um, in conjunction with the boots I'll be wearing, which are uh, TCX Track Evo Gore-Tex. Uh, these are very, very comfortable boots. I've worn these um, for the last couple of months. Very, very comfortable, great ankle support. Basically, when you see when I wear this, <clears throat> the boot, the TCX shin guards are going to slip in right about over here and uh, give you out of protection in the shin and the knee. Um, and these boots are so comfortable on the inside, so comfortable on the inside that I don't even wear a boot sock or a long sock. I've I got these uh, ankle height socks, um, basically just very basic little running socks, and I've been wearing these a lot in the longer rides I've been on, and this allows uh, less material between me and the Gore-Tex, which still allows that airflow and the cooling that I'm looking for in a boot without having a heavy sock on there, and it's still comfortable. Don't even feel a difference. And I did buy the um, the sleeves, those knee sleeves. That would run the length of my calf and knee um, that the straps would then go around for added comfort but these things are so comfortable these liat knee and shin guards are so comfortable um, these goes right against my skin all this goes right against my skin i've worn these for extended hours before obviously these things were made more for uh, extreme motocross type of stuff so you know they'll wear them for just maybe an hour or two or something or as long as on the circuit I've had these on for as long as six hours at a time and very, very comfortable, very um, invasive. So, uh, let me pause real quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna start gearing up. So after I put after I put the um, the Liat shorts on, these cotton shorts are gonna come off before I put on my riding pants. But just for <laughs> YouTube's sake, <laughs> um, I'm leaving my cotton shorts on as I put the knee guards on. So these Liat, I'm gonna put them right over my knee. They have a a dual joint right here, so they it pivot just just real nice. I mean, they don't even feel like they're on. And the more you wear them, when you don't wear them, it feels like you you're definitely missing something. So I put them on in the sequence, and you can see the liat right here, uh, short. So basically, that first top drop with that neoprene clips right on here. Boom. Boom. Second clip. Third one's down here. I articulate it, make sure I got a good bend. A little sock. And the process is the same for the uh, second leg. Okay, so after the pause, I uh, geared up my uh, left leg just as I did the right socks. And then I put on the, I put on the riding pants. Um, I don't generally put anything in these pockets. I do have uh, like a holster pocket my wife got me that will be sitting here. I'll show you guys that later. And then the Velcro tabs on the side. So going to the boot, 
I'm just gonna do one like I did on the prior one just for the sake of time. So uh, three, three cam like buckles, one, actually I'm sorry, two, and then Velcro here. So as I put the boot on, the um, the writing uh, the writing pants you just got to make sure that this leather part if you can see it this is leather it's kind of thick I pulled over out of the boot a little bit and this is rough velcro but the pants protect my leg so I clipped the first one and I don't think there's any specific sequence order that you should or shouldn't do this one two and then the velcro goes around this one seems a little loose, so I'm going to adjust it. There we go. All right. This one's on. The uh, second boot is going to be the same process. So uh, I moved into our guest room to do some more videoing. Uh, lighting's a little bit better in here, and I'm just trying to keep quiet so I don't wake up my, my wife and girls. So, like I said, today's Sunday. Um, now, real quick, I'm just going to show you the. So, my wife got me this holster pouch, which is really nice because a lot of riding pants don't have cargo pockets. But what I'm keeping in here, um, I'll get into too much further detail, is uh, this one. The main pouch has uh, one of the touring books. Actually, let, let me show you. Um, show you real quick. So, these are some of the, the maps. I do have a state series map that I'm bringing, but um, the other, I'm only bringing the maps that I'll be traveling through for that day. I'll be in my, my riding pouch here. The rest of the states are in my uh, my carry bags on the bike. That one, uh, two specific Route 66 maps. This one, this one on top is really kind of hard to find these days. And then this one that I got through the AAA. I wrote all my notes in this one. And uh, maybe tonight at the hotel, I'll show you some of the detailed stuff I did in that one. I got uh, made in Canada, a really interesting atlas of Route 66. I'll go over that further in detail. And then the one book I did decide to bring travel-wise is the EZ Guide. I can show that in detail. Some of the things I'm carrying, oh, this is a kind of a cool one. This is an original, not an original, this is a reproduction of the first uh, touring book, I think 1947 or 48. Um, but why I'm carrying this, it's definitely outdated. But I wanted to make some comparisons on how this author viewed uh, Route 66 and some of the... Uh, the technical details and specs of uh, that he has in there and how they contrast today. And it's small enough to carry, so um, I'm gonna be carrying that one with me. And then there's two other pouches on this. One I have like pens and pencils in, um, and, then, and then this mesh pouch here, I have a spare set of keys and then a neck gator. Uh, while I zip this up, I'm just gonna say, so yesterday was my daughter Olivia's 13th birthday and we spent the day down in, um, uh, at the San Diego, I keep calling it the Wild Animal Park. That's what it was known as I grew up, but it's like the, Cal the San Diego Animal Safari Park. Uh, really cool, we got to see some uh, kangaroos roll up close, and my girls actually got to feed them, which was neat. But I gotta say last night, you know, last night getting ready for this trip or thinking about it, it was a combination of feeling like uh, the night before Christmas for a kid with anticipation, and then like the night before one of my military deployments where I was I'm always like nervous if I'm packing everything that I need. And generally, unlike this trip too, I uh, probably overpack. I've always packed, overpacked from my military deployments. So uh, I kind of thought, do I have everything? Do I pack everything? Now this is Route 66. Anything that I might not have packed, I can find on, on the road, you know? There's always those no-go items, IDs, whatnot, that are hard to replace on the road that I know I have. Um, so uh, those I for sure I got, but... Um, you know, and then being away from the family, you know, I want to make sure I'm leaving my, my family in a good spot as far as, uh, you know, making sure it's, it's seamless for them while I'm gone. Ironically, this is the time of year where I would be in Korea for a, for a deployment. Uh, I'm not going this year. I'm doing my Route 66 trip. So um, uh, about the same time frame, too, about a three or four week period, I'd go over there for these exercises. And we'd come back on Labor Day weekend, and I'm coming back on Labor Day weekend on this trip. Uh, there's been... So I'm not taking this trip lightly. Um, I have a lot of protective gear that I wear. My bike was previously, uh, recently serviced. I got really good riding equipment that I'll be on. I got a really good plan in place, uh, making sure that I'm gonna get you know, good sleep, good eating. So uh, although I'm very excited about it, I'm not taking it lightly. But uh, I think that's 
that's what I wanted to talk about this morning. And I know this is, I'm, I'm really tired. I'm just waking up. Um, I'll probably pause this and do a little bit of my rollout. I got to still put on my jacket. I'm going to get a cup of coffee. I'll probably eat breakfast about an hour out. Uh, one thing I did want to mention too, this will probably be the first video in the series of my actual getting out on the road. Tonight when I publish everything, you're going to see uh, me starting in Santa Monica and stopping initially in San Bernardino on Mount Vernon and I think 4th Street at the Juan Pollo Chicken location, which is right around the corner from the historic McDonald's. This morning I'm gonna to go to that location. Now, that one segment, I did Route 66 from Santa Monica to San Bernardino. That was actually about three weeks ago um, before we did the uh, Seattle trip uh, with the family this summer. So I, I did that really quick and so I wouldn't have time to do it now. But as you folks watch it, I hope that I can edit it well enough where it's seamless, where you see me going from Santa Monica to the Juan Pollo Chicken, and then I'm gonna pick up there again. I'm probably gonna do a quick six minute ride over to the historic McDonald's, which will be closed. But I, I think that's really important for people to see that are traveling out here, that that McDonald's isn't on, physically on Route 66. Uh, it's only about a six minute detour, which is well worth it. So um, yes, Santa Monica to San Bernardino was about three weeks ago. I'm starting in San Bernardino at that location I left off this morning, and uh, final destination will be Kingman, Arizona. Uh, a lot of the things I'm gonna be passing this morning, I've, I've videotaped heavily before. I'm not gonna stop there. Uh, a lot of them are gonna be closed anyways. I'm trying to beat the heat, and the first two, three days of my trip are the longest uh, road time days, which are gonna be about five to six hours on the bike. And then I go down to four and three hours. And then some days I'm down to two hours on the bike and doing more sightseeing. So uh, let's just wrap this one up. I wanna keep, keep this one going. I just woke up, none of this was planned, but uh, I hope you find it interesting and, and going along with me and thinking, you know, you know, boom, he, he, he's on the road. All right, so I'm gonna conclude this. So like, subscribe, don't forget to get out there and ride. Um, uh, keep me in your prayers. I, for those of you that have my Facebook, the YouTube site, and the GPS link, please follow along and I'm hoping for uh, good things to come. All right, have a great day, YouTube.